Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer. In this section we're going to look at section 3.6 that deals with constructing models using functions or with functions. And this is essentially application problems. Hopefully this will inspire some critical thinking and, and how we can find some place to actually use what we're learning. Here's an example of uh, a rancher has 360 yards of fencing with which to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals, one for sheep and one for cattle. A river forms one side of the corrals. Suppose that the width of each corral is x yards. Let's, uh, now that we've read it, do I understand the words that are being used? OK, I know what a rancher does, or you know, I have some concept there. I know all about fencing, I would suppose. And, Rectangular, I know what shape that is. Uh, we have sheep and cattle. So basically, we read it the first time. Just make sure, do I understand the information that's being communicated? The second time I read it, I want to determine what's the given information. A rancher has 360 yards of fencing. So that's the, all the fencing he has, 360 yards, linear yards. And he needs to enclose two adjacent rectangular corrals. So there's two corrals. And I'm just going to start illustrating some of this information. I have two corrals, and they're rectangular. And I'm told that uh, one's for sheep and one's for cattle, but a river forms one side of the corrals. So in my illustration here, this is the river that kind of shows this is bordering my corral. So I have some river right here. So I understand what's the shape, what's going on. I know that this red fencing here can only be 360 yards if I add up all the sides of these uh, rectangular corrals. One's for sheep and one's for cattle. Well, for funsies, I could draw some uh, cattle in one and sheep in the other, but we really don't need to do that. Uh, suppose that the width of each corral is x yards. Well, let's say that our width is this right here. We'll say this is the width. So this is also the width. This is also the width. So let's assign another variable to the length I don't know. Let's call this y. So now we have an illustration to work with. And this was given information. So let's see what the question is going to ask. Well, the question's broken into several parts. So let me just move this board out of the way. Hopefully you take a mental picture of our illustration there. All right, we're asked to express the area of the two corrals as a function of x. So what do we need to bring to the table? What do we need to know when we read that problem a third time? Well, what I need to know is there's something about the perimeter of the fence or the amount of fencing I have. It's 360 total yards. Well, I know that there are three sides of x length in my illustration and one side of y length. So I'm able to build an equation that says this is the amount of fencing I have, and I need three lengths of x and one length of y. Well, it asks me to express the area of the two corrals as a function of x. Well, it's asking me for the area. Well, I know a little bit about area. Area is length or width times the other value, so length times width or width times length, whichever way you want to look at it. So now I have these two things that I brought with me, perimeter and area. These are things that I know at this level of math. But it's asking me to express as a function of x, one variable. So if we look at this with two equations, well, I kind of have a system here. So maybe I can build a function with the given information. Well, I know I can solve this one for y. So I'm just going to solve it for y. y equals 360 minus 3x. Just move that across the equal sign. And now I can substitute it in to this, my area, because that's what it asked me to find, in terms of just one variable, the x variable. So area as a function of x, I can use function notation, is x times 360 minus 3x. That's what y is. y is this value. So I substitute it. And now I can do a little bit of simplification. Just distribute that. 360x 
minus 3x squared. And hopefully we recognize this and say, hey, we have an x squared. This is a quadratic. I built a quadratic function that describes what's going on here. So did I answer the first part, express the area of the two corrals as a function of x? Sure enough, there it is. Now, the next thing it asks is the domain. Now, I look at the domain of a quadratic function, and I say, hey, well, that's all real numbers. I can plug anything in for x. But here's where we have to think critically. We have to think, how does this apply to the real world? Can I have a side of a corral that is less than 0? Can I have a negative distance? No. So what I have to realize is there is a domain restriction. And that domain restriction is x must be greater than or equal to 0. Even if it's 0, it kind of really doesn't make sense, because we just have a straight line of fencing that isn't enclosing any area. The area would be 0 if x was 0, right? 0 times this, 0 times that, area of 0. But we're still utilizing all the fence. So it's possible, but no rancher is going to build just a straight fence to enclose anything. They'll just walk around. So we use a little bit of critical thinking. So our domain is x must be greater than or equal to 0. We're not going to have a negative distance. Here, uh, the next part is find the dimensions of the corral. Now, we could use a calculator. We could just graph it and maybe use that uh, maximum function on our calculators that we discussed in a previous section. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to do it algebraically. Because I recognize this as being a quadratic, I know quadratic uh, vertex formula. So I'm just going to find that. I want to find the dimensions. Well, I can find the value that maximizes the dimension of this corral. That's our goal, is to maximize it. So I'm going to use negative b over 2 times a, my coefficient of the x squared term, 2 times negative 3. Well, this is 360 over 6, which gives me 60. This is my maximum dimension for x. Now, to find the dimension of y, well, I already have this solved for y. I can just plug this in. Negative 3 times 60 is negative 180. 360 minus 180, my y value at the maximum, is going to be 180. So one thing we have to remember about application problems is they definitely need units. So my width, which I'm calling x, is going to be 60 yards for each piece of x. And for y, my length in this case, whatever you, however you look at it, is going to be 180 yards long. This was the side in our illustration that was parallel to the river. So it's going to run 180 yards the length of the river. Now, the last one asks us to find the maximum area. And we could use our calculators to do that. But we have all the information we need here. We can just plug in x equals 60, that value, into our function because it is a value of x. So I can say, well, 60 squared is 3,600 times a negative 3 is 10,800. 60 times 360 is 21,600. Well, anyways, if we subtract them, we get 10,000. 800. So essentially, we're assessing this for the area of x, where, or the area as x is 60, evaluate the function. We get 10,800 square, because it's an area, yards. And this answers our maximum area. So we didn't need a calculator. The numbers weren't. Small, but they were manageable. So definitely think about it. Try to build the story problem. First thing you do is read it. Make sure you understand it. Read it again. Pull the information out. Read it a third time. Make sure you understand what's being asked of you. And then go back and make sure you answered the question. Did I build a function of x? Yes, I did. It described the area. Was I able to find the domain? Well, that's where we had to do a little critical thinking and say, hey, does it make sense to have a, an x value less than 0? Well, no, we're not going to have negative distances. Did we find the maximum dimensions? Well, if x is 60 and y is 180, we maximize the area. And what is that area? 10,800 square yards. 
So this has been section 3.6. Thank you for watching.